Please welcome to the stage, Scott Muir, co-founder, Ambit Pay. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, uh, my name is Owen Scott Muir. I am a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist by training. And there is a clicker here so I can advance slides. That's magic. Um, I'm going to be talking about using uh, Spruce, uh, one of the products that's really common in DPC land, and how we use that in psychiatry to take people who had a variety of levels of training and make them able to generate value by managing crises with essentially the eye of Sauron. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a little bit of a love letter to Spruce. I don't work there. Um, I just think it's a remarkable team building a remarkable product. And uh, I was practicing full-time as a psychiatrist until I'm not, because getting paid was the problem. And so one of the things I hope we'll take away from this is value is generated by a lot of things. And one of them is just accepting the truth that direct primary care doctors and patients have trust. And that trust exists and is the most important currency for generating value that exists in healthcare, because if patients won't do it, it doesn't matter. So really frequently, uh, and I had my wife uh, demo this with me, um, it, as a mental health professional, I would be getting texts about patients in crisis. And a lot of the time, um, that led to worrying. And since most, there are not enough psychiatrists even remotely, um, someone's going to get those messages. And what Spruce has is a way to not worry alone and to integrate, you know, across disciplines and minds when we're taking care of one person. And so the trick here is that uh, there is a yellow section in Spruce, which is an internal communication. And so the massive difference we were able to make was having multiple clinicians and even administrators on the back end of any conversation communicating with each other. And that means that every part of the interaction with your practice becomes part of the information you have about how to care for somebody. And when that care involves risk, which, hey, it's medicine, all of it does, it's really important to be able to manage that risk. And the reason psychiatric hospitalization exists, as far as I can tell, is because people who are in crisis suffering are terrifying, and we don't want them to die, and so we panic. And we don't do the same risk-benefit calculations that we're able to do more calmly when there's plenty of time to think about it. I think I'm going to kill myself, somebody says, oh my god, go to the hospital. I'm not saying don't refer people to the hospital when they're suicidal, per se. I'm saying the ability to think about it together changed the game. We had a practice where we screened patients in if they were high risk. And that meant they had prior psychiatric hospitalizations, medical comorbidities, etc. So the base rate of hospitalization was 98%. That dropped to 1.2% after a year in our care across the entire 1,500 patient cohort. And that sustained over two years. And that got us contracting uh, that was unique and let us bypass prior authorization. And the way we did that, the magic wasn't anything whiz-bang. It was literally having the ability to not worry alone. And so when someone would message in a crisis, we actually had the ability, because Spruce built it for us, because we asked, that's why working with tech companies and engaging with industry is helpful, they were able to build a crisis page. We were able to have people be on the crisis team. And so when a patient was having a crisis, there were one, two, three, sometimes even more licensed physicians and clinicians documenting in the medical record, at which point you will never lose a lawsuit <laughs> because you have the documentation that other clinicians in the community, sometimes in real time, uh, agreed that what was happening was the standard of care 
and it was done effortlessly and essentially passively from our perspective. Not worrying alone is magic. Um, and I do, I'm going to leave plenty of time at the end of this for, for interaction and questions because I imagine you may have some for me um, doing this work. One of the things that we discovered was that the ability to not worry alone also meant not worrying across disciplines. And in the time since I started using Spruce, they rebuilt their entire system so that you can collaborate across practices and within them. And so as a direct primary care practice, if there's more than one other person you're working with, or you work with anyone else who's using a system like this, and you talk to each other, that's both medical legally good, helps your brain make better decisions, doesn't just have to be at crises, but generates an ability to, to worry less and to make better decisions. Because at the end of the day, what's going to happen if someone does something dumb and expensive? And they go to the ER and, you know, there, there isn't a, a, a magical uh, solution that an emergency medicine colleague or an inpatient psychiatrist is going to do for your breakup. But the human connection and saying, look, you took what you told me was two Tylenol. Let's make sure that's the case. And then I'll talk to you after you get discharged at five tonight, if that's what they want to do. Um, and that communication was the technology to drive hospitalization rates down, down, down. Fundamentally, I think there aren't enough psychiatrists and there won't be. Uh, we're retiring at a massive rate because that's how we opt out of the system. Um, and there are going to be a third fewer psychiatrists in just about 10 years. And there are already only 30,000 of us. So referring someone to a, a psychiatrist, and that's mental health, but medical, unfortunately. Um, it, it's an important option, but I don't think it's the actual solution. I think it's collaborating together on these really important questions in people's lives, which, you know, the choice of Prozac or Zoloft might matter, but mostly it's being able to stay calm and work with patients in a way that lets us not be freaked out. And that means having another human around uh, to think together with. And a system like Spruce let us do that. And that's, that's the story I wanted to tell, is that not worrying alone is magic and kept patients out of places that are really profoundly unhelpful. Um, any kind of thoughts or questions about the interaction with psychiatry is welcome, but here's the real point when you're doing your conversations around contracting. From the Validation Institute, which is the gold standard, if you're not aware of that, in self-funded employer land for what actually generates savings and value. A co-occurring depression diagnosis, which I take as a proxy for any mental health problem because it's not like diagnosis is accurate or real, <laughs> practically. Like there's, in, there's an underlying truth biologically um, or psychosocially, we just don't necessarily know what it is. But it drives up spending by 44% on general medical spend. And so the time you spend addressing things like depression or personality disorders which exist or any of the other things, uh, that is time that's driving down general medical spend by a phenomenal amount. Getting out of the business means it's going to be primary care whether we want it to be or not. A three-hour psychiatric intake to get your ADHD medicine is dumb. 30 minutes with someone who has no training in it is probably also dumb, but I, I don't have to, you know decide that, I just have to know that it, it, there are too many people and not enough of us. And I'm going to refer you to a specialist at my QVC Moment Clinic. Do you like that fake branding? <laughs> um, is important if what you're trying to do is drive healthcare spend up. Um, but the chance that you're going to go see someone you don't know and don't trust when you're sitting in front of someone you do know and do trust is low. And that's it. The digital curbside is here. Uh, I think Spruce is one of the ways that can happen. And uh, I, I wish I was a paid endorser. I am consulting with Spruce now about getting this to more people, but mostly because I'm an evangelical. 
um, for help. Um, thinking together is the tool. And just this week, a paper was published showing collaborative care and outpatient mental health is saving $78 per member. Uh, and that's a 1.7x ROI. And that kind of data is the kind of data that gets contracting done. So working together to make care better, measuring it, and then feeding that back in our effortless documentation is my, my pitch today. Uh, my company is called First Tracks, and we work around uh, alternate payment models for things that actually work. Ta-da! Hintel, thank you for having me. And I didn't have to rant about the matrix and pharmacy benefit managers, but that's because the uh, Federal Trade Commission is investigating the top six as of yesterday night. That's just true. It's, I, I, like, I, I rarely see like bangers of a release from the FTC for information, but like, it's a banger. <laughs> Any thoughts or questions from the audience uh, around uh, the interactions I talked about? Nothing. I do want to, by the way, thank Hint and particularly the sound folks who are rocking the playlist of this conference. Uh, I, I, it's, it's amazing. Thank you so much. And thanks, Hint, for having me. And my colleagues in direct primary care, you actually make that difference every single day that we all depend on because mental health is health and direct primary care is primary care. <laughs> uh, so doing it indirectly, not the thing that makes sense. Thank you so much for having me.